It's 1997. Titanic's breaking box office records. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone is published. And Donald Trump is more of a party animal than a political one. Meanwhile, Toyota launched the Prius, the first mass-produced hybrid vehicle, and in the 27 years since have sold more than 6 million and inspired tens of millions more. But have hybrids plugged the gap for long enough, or are they as essential as ever? What on earth are e-revs? And will all electric vehicles really render all hybrids obsolete? Let's find out on this self-charging episode of The Fully Charged Show. It's self-charging, right? Love The Fully Charged Show? Well then join us live in Sydney in March, London in April, or in Vancouver or Farnborough or Melbourne in September, October and November 2025. Make no mistake, the original Prius was an electric vehicle in the same way that a catfish is a cat. It had an engine, but just had an electric motor. In fairness, it was the most fuel efficient car on the market and proved very, very popular. However, over time, the term hybrid electric vehicle has become an increasingly misleading misnomer. Hybrid internal combustion engine vehicle would be far more accurate. In 1899, when Lona Porsche dabbled with plug-in hybrid electric, and Renault revived the concept with the electrode in 2003. It was eventually Toyota that was the car in front in 2010. The Prius plug-in hybrid electric vehicle popularized the technology. And again, although it was still a combustion vehicle and all electric mode was petrol powered, it was a huge sales success. So far, so good for plug-in hybrid cars, but there was a problem. Spurred on by Toyota's success, Nissan launched the all-electric Leaf in an attempt to leapfrog their rivals. While well-received, the stated 100-mile range also limited the Leaf's market. And in terms of sales, the Fev Prius was the most popular eco-car on the planet. This was the beginning of the battery electric vehicle era, though, and Tesla's Model S had also gone into production. It spawned the Model 3 and Model Y in time, but was pretty pricey. Despite the doubters, in 2018, thousands of Tesla Model 3s made it through production hell, and a star car was born. This gave Toyota a big problem. Happy with hybrid sales, it stopped innovating in metal and started innovating in marketing. In 2019, the term self-charging hybrid was born, a term that was immediately banned in Norway, but remains in use to this day in the UK and elsewhere. And honestly, as a piece of marketing, it's pure genius and pure fiction. It's as disingenuous as clean coal, clean diesel and natural gas, but has been much more effective. It is, of course, another plug-in hybrid ICE car, and the only self-charging comes from regen braking and represents a negligibly small percentage of the car's power. This term and the advertising that went with it definitely resulted in consumer confusion and many people bought a self-charging hybrid under false pretenses. Hybrids were always acknowledged to be a bridge technology before battery EVs or the now never to take off hydrogen fuel cell vehicles could compete with a trusty combustion engine. They've also been termed as a gateway drug to help people that were hesitant to head straight for all electric. But on performance, efficiency, and even running costs, consumers have been done a huge disservice. Hybrids are a halfway house, neither fish nor fowl. Worse still, plug-in hybrids are much more carbon intensive than battery electric vehicles, even if used efficiently and charged regularly, which studies show most are not. Often, they aren't even plugged in. So that brings us up to speed. Consumers have largely seen through the spin and battery electric vehicles are already outselling plug-in hybrids in all of the data we've seen. But that's not the end of the story. And this is arguably where it gets more interesting. There has been lots of misinformation lately that battery EV sales are down, a myth comprehensively debunked in our electric car cliff episode here. It seems as if some of the car makers have been sucked in by this misreporting too. Even some battery EV only companies, the latest of which are Neo and Xpeng, have pivoted to also offering cars that don't solely rely on batteries. We are of course referring to electric range extended vehicles. But is this just the industry trying to rebadge hybrids one last time? And our answer might surprise you. No, these are not combustion engine vehicles. They are definitely battery electric vehicles, or they do come with a range extender, so are not all electric. This isn't original either. I bought my first battery EV, a BMW i3, the best part of a decade ago. And let me tell you what an amazing vehicle that is, although it's only available as a used EV these days. But it did come with a range extender, a small twin cylinder gas engine that would extend the Mark 1 BMW i3 from 80 miles to 120 miles worth of range, if necessary. E-revs, as they're now being termed, are on vogue with an increasing number of car makers who can't quite bear watching their customers buy an e-rev or a hybrid from one of their competitors. Scout Motors, for example, recently launched their Terra and Traveller battery EVs with a 350 mile range and an extender that can take the range all the way to 500 miles. 
We can see the logic and we expect this will be popular where there's big country to cross, as in the US, Canada and Australia. And if an E-Rev has a decent battery only range like Scout is proposing, then we can get partially, if not all the way on board. After all, if FEVs were supposed to be a gateway drug to BEVs, then E-Revs will be all the more so. In fact, E-Revs could prove to be the last nail in the coffin for combustion powered HEVs and FEVs. While E-Revs are not necessarily a bridge to nowhere, it's still obvious to us at least that all electric vehicles are inevitable. After all, lugging around two drivetrains in one vehicle is surely the definition of inefficiency. And evolution, Darwinism indeed, has shown us that the most efficient survives. Let us know what you think. Could you be tempted by an E-Rev? Or are you all in on all electric? Whatever your answer, you can follow everything electric here on The Fully Charged Show. Please like, subscribe, and tell your friends. After 300,000 all-electric miles, I can confirm there's nothing to be scared of.